Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another Sigma Life Hangout. Today, we're discussing with Meltemi Kinji and Alexandros Lordos, members of the Seed Center, a project of which is the SCORE Index. Well, you're here to tell us what these acronyms mean and what do they mean to the Cypriot community, both the Greek Cypriot and the Turkish <laughs> Cypriot community. I find the words as such, seed and score, quite interesting. Well, to my view, are we planting the seeds for the tree of peace? Are we keeping score between the two communities? How does it work? Thanks a lot for inviting us. Um, SEED acronym stands for the Center for um, Sustainable Peace and Democratic Development. And it grew out of um, Cyprus 2015 project which uh, emerged in May, in May 2009 to, to bridge the gap between the two communities in Cyprus and the Cyprus peace process. And how did it come about? Is it under some other organization? Was it a, um, something that people from both communities wanted to do by themselves? Uh, it included um, key academics from the two communities. Mm -hmm. um, so it was um, representing the opinions of the two communities mm -hmm. um, and it was it started as a project which was funded by UNDP Act and mm -hmm. USAID so that's how we originally started and in 2012 we turned into the first bicommunal think tank in Cyprus. That sounds very interesting and what about SCORE? Well, the SCORE index, the SCORE stands for, I, I suppose we're quite good at acronyms, I think that's the implication <laughs> here. SCORE, Obviously. Um, uh, our colleague Ahmed Sozen, who is not here with us today, he's usually the one who picks the acronyms and he's really <laughs> good at that. So SCORE stands for Social Cohesion and Reconciliation Index. Mm -hmm. um, the, the SCORE index is a tool to measure the state of peace in a given multi-ethnic society. Mm -hmm. Not just Cyprus, that is. No. And not just Cyprus. Oh. So we, we initially developed it for, for, uh, for Cyprus, mm -hmm. but right from the very right from the get go, what we had in mind was to develop something that would evolve into that would scale up, if you like, into a tool that can be used in several different contexts. Mm -hmm. And it was something that we've been pursuing quite deliberately right from the beginning. When we developed the score, we actually invited a group of experts from around the world to help us with the design of the mm -hmm. tool. Uh, we invited people from uh, South Africa, <coughs> from Ireland, from Israel and Palestine, from uh, the Balkans, from the United States. We invited uh, uh, experts from a, a partner organization of ours, Interpeace, mm -hmm. which has been supporting us uh, uh, to grow as, as uh, the seed uh, center mm -hmm. right from the beginning of uh, from 2009 that uh, Meltem mentioned. So we, we started with uh, injecting what the world, the best of what the world has to say mm -hmm. about social cohesion and reconciliation. And then we developed tools that were calibrated for Cyprus, but also quite easy to calibrate in other contexts. Before going to other countries, mm -hmm. the index, the social cohesion, is a broad topic. It, mm -hmm. I think Indeed, it depicts yes. a lot of different things. So I guess you have various index about mm -hmm. different uh, parts, different angles of the same topic. What yes. would you say were the most interesting findings that you had in Cyprus? In Cyprus, well, uh, we, in Cyprus we measured three three overall dimensions. Mm -hmm. One, the one that we call social cohesion, another one that we call reconciliation, and then readiness for political compromise. Mm. And there are different specific variables under each dimension. So, a very interesting finding under social cohesion is the sense to which people feel represented by political institutions, which is uh, it's actually an important dimension of social cohesion, that when we think of the government, of parliament, of uh, the justice system or the police or any other institution, do we believe that they're working for us, for our best interest? Do we believe that they're taking our own opinion into account? I'm really curious to, yes. to hear what you found. Well, we found that in both communities, this was one of the sad agreements between the two communities. Sad yeah. agreements. In that both communities felt that uh, representativeness of institutions was really low. And it was, the, it was the poorest indicator of social cohesion in both communities. Mm. At the positive end of social cohesion, what we found was that both communities, and especially the Greek Cypriot community, experience relatively high levels of political security. Now, what does that mean? Political security is the extent to which one feels free 
to express one's views mm -hmm. without fear of retribution yeah. by opposition or by the government or by anyone else. So in the Greek Cypriot community, that's really high. People feel quite free to say whatever they want here. I which think is there's a bug coming along. <laughs> Doesn't that stand in the Turkish Cypriot community? In the Turkish Cypriot it's community? Slightly <laughs> less. Slightly less. Yeah. Slightly less. And what about the readiness? The, the third now, index. The readiness for reconciliation, for readiness for political compromise, we found a slightly paradoxical result. Uh, we asked different questions there. One question we asked was, are you willing to accept a, a federal solution in Cyprus? Another question we asked under readiness for reconciliation was, do you really want to get rid of the status quo? Mm -hmm. And we found a disconnect between those two questions. So in the Greek Cypriot community, Everyone wants to get rid of the status quo. The status quo is almost universally seen to be unacceptable. However, when you ask about the federal solution, only about 30 to 40 percent are eager to say that this is a good solution. Mm -hmm. This is not to say that only 30 percent would vote yes. Let's not confuse that. Yeah, That's yeah, a slightly yeah. different story. But only 30 or 40 percent are eager about the federation. So there's a disconnect between that 80 or 90 percent that wants the status quo to end and the 30 percent that actually accepts the only solution that seems to be on the negotiating table in the Turkish Cypriot community. In the Turkish Cypriot community, um, when we compare the data between mm -hmm. 2013 and 2014, we see that people are supporting of a less of a federation. Mm -hmm. So hopefully with uh, the reception of the peace talks mm -hmm. soon, um, we're, we should have a new score, definitely, to see how mm. the perceptions will change. So, more or less, it was the same thing in both communities. Uh, actually, what I wanted to add there was that Turkish Cypriots are slightly more willing to accept federation than mm. Greek Cypriots. Mm -hmm. But still, there, but, there's that but disconnect, but, but not those, as well, actually, high. Actually, the, in the Turkish Cypriot community, there seems also to be more tolerance of the status quo. Oh. So, it's like... Greek Cypriots are desperate to get rid of the status quo, but they don't like the only solution that is on the table. Mm -hmm. Whereas Turkish Cypriots say, sure, I can accept federation, but I can also live with the status quo for a while longer. But then the, the last election showed that they really want to break the status quo. So I think a new index Clearly, is yes. Yes. really yeah. in. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we really need to do a new yeah, index. We've done it twice, yeah. but we need to do it one more time. Has yeah. it begun? Have, has the research begun on the new index? No, no, not, not, yet. Yet, not yet, but not yet. that's why I wanted to highlight that we really need to have a new score index because obviously, even though this is what yes. we have found in the uh, previous score research, Obviously, with the election results, it shows that the status quo was no longer uh, people's choice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and we're um, looking for funding. <laughs> oh, moment. you're looking for funding. And yeah. how does that funding come to you? Um, uh, where do you go out for funding? Maybe we have some viewers that would hope to fund and yeah. help this project. Yeah, basically, we, we are cooperating with... Uh, we're trying to approach both international donors and local donors. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we do, we do not have any particular... Um, and where does the money come from particularly? Do, do, do local donors feel more, in, more invested investing their money or do international factors invest their money mm -hmm. easier? It's a, a sad reality of the Cyprus situation is that even though local donors are not, not quite poor, uh, Cyprus is not a poor country, of course, it's much worse off today than it was three yeah. years ago. But still, that doesn't mean that everyone is poor. There are still some people with a lot of money and some people, of course, who are struggling. But even before the crisis, uh, we found that it was really difficult to get Cypriot donors to get involved. Because in they do not projects. believe in the project? What, well, why do you think that I'm was? not sure. It's, uh, I, I think everyone has in Cyprus has grown comfortable with internationals taking responsibility mm -hmm. for funding in, in, in bicommunal projects. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, maybe sometimes it makes it also easier to disown these projects oh. when when we don't like what they're telling us. But uh, it, that, that is a sad reality. We By international donors, we mean mostly U.S. U U.S. in Cyprus. The biggest donors in Cyprus for us also have mm -hmm. been the United Nations Development Program, mm -hmm. which in turn is funded by the United States mm -hmm. Program for International Aid. Uh, in other countries, we work with other donors. Usually it is with large international 
development organizations who and tend to find such projects interesting. You said that academics make up this community of yours. Mm. What, um, what genre of academics, what mm. speciality are these academics mostly from? Are they international relations specialists? Are they political specialists? Mm. Are they sociologists? I would say combination, mm -hmm. because for such a sophisticated tool, we need both mm -hmm. a background of social psychology as well as knowledge of local politics, international relations. So we have a team that has both uh, psychologists and international relations. And experts. the percentages of academics in from the Greek Cypriot community and the Turkish Cypriot community, is it a 50-50 relationship? It's a good question, actually. Yeah, good question. You know, it varies. Sometimes we have majority Turkish Cypriots, sometimes we have majority Greek Cypriots, but we never worry about it too much because mm -hmm. it's... Uh, when we first started our work back in 2009, we were actually quite tense around each other and we felt oh, we have to have the balances between the communities and have to make sure that uh, and uh, we have to make sure that, that we, need, yes, we uh, have that, to respect that power yeah. sharing and that <laughs> no one community controls the project and but after a while we realized that we don't have different agendas we are, we are all scientists and we we all know how to be objective about our work so uh, for several years i was the one Greek Cypriot academic with two Turkish Cypriot colleagues. Mm -hmm. And nowadays there is one Turkish Cypriot colleague and there are two of us who are there in the research team, two Greek Cypriots in the research team. And we don't really care about that. It really doesn't matter. The only people who seem to care about that are like the UN. So sometimes when you go to, <laughs> it's, it's quite funny really, but sometimes when we go to the UN, we actually have to worry about making sure that there is one representative from each community. Otherwise, the UN might not trust us in, uh, that we're objective. I thought you would have said it would have been the critics of the project. Mm -hmm. I, I thought you would have said that some critics of the, of the project would have been somewhat careful with mm. depicting the percentages of people no, participating. It takes us to another topic actually, because W what happens is that we try to collect data from both communities in all our projects, then we try to think together about the implications, and then we go separately to our own community to disseminate the findings. So, for instance, when there's a public event in the Greek Cypriot community, um, it's likely to be in Greek, mm -hmm. and it's likely yeah. to be me and other Makes Greek sense. Cypriot colleagues presenting. And similarly, when, when it's in the Turkish Cypriot community, Meltem and other Turkish Cypriot colleagues will take care of that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The, <laughs> We're running out of time, so yes. I really want to touch upon, you said that it's a universal thing. Yeah, yes. What are the other countries that you're working with or in? Okay. Well, we're currently, regarding the score, we are currently, we've already completed the score in Bosnia-Herzegovina, mm -hmm. which is a very interesting country with three main ethnic groups, the Bosniaks, the Serbs and the Croats. Mm -hmm. So it's a much more complex situation yeah. that we had to understand and deal with. And there we worked directly with the United States uh, aid program and uh, we're trying to help them to tease out programmatic implications based on the score. Mm -hmm. We're also working in Nepal, in an uh, earthquake that structure That sounds extremely Nepal. interesting. Uh, they were working with the German Development Aid Organization. We are the, the purpose of the Nepal score is to identify peace needs in the different districts of the country and to work with the local Ministry of Peace and Reconstruction. They do have a Ministry of Peace in <laughs> Nepal. In Cyprus we have a peace day, but there they have a Ministry of Peace. So it just shows how seriously different societies take these things. Thank you so much both for mm -hmm. your time. It's really, really interesting and I can't wait for the next index. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be waiting for the results okay. and I hope to have you here again so you can explain your findings. Thank, thank you, you for again. having us. Thank and you. thank you for watching. Till next mm -hmm. time, goodbye. Okay.